All right, you little crummers. Today we is bringing you up to date on orcs in the 41st millennium. Ah. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today I will be talking to you about the orc race in Games Workshop's Warhammer 40,000 tabletop war game. To keep up to date with everything at Knights at the Game Table, all you have to do is click subscribe and then hit that tiny little notification button next to it so every time we upload a new video, YouTube will be sure to let you know. The Orcs are an aggressive, warlike, fungus-based life form in the 41st millennium. They like nothing more than to fight and, frankly, to fight. In fact, that's pretty much their whole thing. And if they can't find anybody else to fight with, they will just fight amongst themselves which is probably the only thing preventing an organized orc takeover of the galaxy. Because beyond that, they are terrifying. The more an orc fights, the bigger and tougher he gets. So the very smallest orc-based life forms, uh, Gretchen, are small, weedy, very mean, and generally get kicked about by the bigger orcs a lot. Then you get your orc boy, who's your standard orc trooper, and he is, just like everyone else, in for a fight. The orc boy fights hard enough and long enough and survives long enough, he may well become a knob, the fancier type of orc that tends to be able to afford better equipment and better weapons, but is also bigger and a little bit stronger. Even further than that, you can end up with a war boss, who is the biggest, strongest orc in his locale, who may well be leading a war against the nearest target he can possibly find. Now about the war, which is sort of orc for war, but also crusade, as well as their religion and entire culture. The orcs love to fight so much that their whole way of being is centered around this concept of the enormous, glorious, never-ending combat. And I just want to tell you a little bit about the story of a Tusker Demon Killer, who was one orc who took this so far that he went looking for the biggest, hardest fight he could find at every turn, and he found nothing better to fight than demons. He loved it. They're big, they're strong, they regenerate, and there's countless of them. And so he went killing demon after demon after demon until he decided he couldn't find enough demons to satisfy him in the material world. He got together a whole bunch of orc psychers, otherwise known as weird boys, and had them get him into the immaterium, the demon plane, the warp, where he went and raised three demon planets in a row until he finally crash-landed on a planet ruled by one of the demon princes of Korn known as the Blood Prince. Now, the Blood Prince was a terrifying foe with a huge army behind him, and they fought and fought and fought until at the end it came down to Tuscan, Tusker Demon Killer and the Blood Prince. The Blood Prince was getting the upper hand until Tusker's Weird Boys managed to create a distraction, allowing Tusker to stick his power claw right through the Demon Prince. The Chaos God of War and Bloodshed, Korn, was so impressed by this that he decided to resurrect the Orcs the next day and to have them fight all over again. To everyone's complete shock, except that of the Orcs, the Orcs loved it. And Tusker Demon Killer was the happiest he had ever been because he was given this fight all over again, and they went over and over and over again. And even to this day, or this point in time in the 41st millennium timeline, Tusker Demon Killer and the Blood Prince and his legions are locked in combat, the Orcs reborn every day by the power of corn and pitted against each other, and frankly, the Orcs are having the best time of their existence. Getting back to those weird boys, the Orcs are one of the most powerful psychic races in the galaxy. They just don't know it. But every Orc has this latent psychic energy that affects the world around him. Now, the Weird Boys in particular are the ones who've gained control over this. But they draw their power not just from themselves, but from all the Orcs around them, which is why they have an ability called Wah Energy, which boosts all their psychic powers based on 
how many sets of 10 orc models are nearby them. So in the middle of 100 orc boys, they're going to have plus 10 to all of their psychic powers, which means that the more orcs you have, the more fantastically powerful feats of psychic energy they can perform. Whether it be huge bursts of green lightning or an image of the foot of one of the orc gods, Gork or Mork, come trampling down across their enemies and smash them into smithereens. But this psychic power of belief doesn't just affect their weird boys. The orcs also have these mechs, sometimes big mechs for the bigger, stronger ones, who serve as the orcs inventors, technicians, mechanics, and put together all kinds of scrappy orky machines of warfare and weaponry for the orcs to take to the fore. Whether it's their jets, their bikes, their speedy wagons, or their guns, out of scrap and the sheer force of will, the orcs can put together all kinds of machines. And in the hands of anybody else, these machines and weapons would not work. But the weird boys know that all the boys have seen jets in the sky with wings. So when they get an enormous tin can and put wings on it, it's clearly something that looks like it ought to be able to fly and the collective psychic power of all the orcs actually enables it to do so, despite being mostly a pile of scrap and an engine that shouldn't really work, in the presence of enough orcs, it just does, because it looks like it ought to. That goes the same for all of their weaponry and everything else that they create. Another type of orc specialist is the pain boy. The pain boy is the orc equivalent of a doctor, although you probably wouldn't want to end up on their operating table. The pain boy's way of operating on someone is much the same as the mech's way of putting a machine together. Just slap it together and make it look like it ought to work. So, if an orc boy has had an arm mangled, they will chop off the rest of the arm and stick in some mechanical contrivance in there that by some feat of sheer belief more than science, medicine, or mechanics will operate as a cybernetic arm, usually with an enormous great metal claw at the end to clamp down on their enemies and do significantly more damage than a simple orc's fist. One particular prominent pain boy, Mad Doc Grotznik, one day operated on a great war boss called Grasgal Thraka, somehow managing to uh, repair extensive head injuries brought him back pretty much from the other side of death. Now, Grasgel Thraka, for whatever reason, came back with terrible headaches, having visions of the orc gods, Gork and Mork, and somehow being even stronger and more resilient than he was before. A bunch of orc knobs noticed this and asked Mad Dog, Mad Dog Grotznik to do exactly the same thing to them, believing they get significantly more powerful. Mad Doc Grotznik, not being quite as mad as his name suggested, agreed, but was also aware this probably wouldn't work. So, implanted a bunch of micro-explosives inside all of those knobs' heads in case it didn't work, and they got a little bit upset about the results. It didn't work, they got a little bit upset about the results, but they also found out about Mad Doc Grotznik's micro-explosives and killed him before he got a chance to set them off. Fortunately for Mad Doc Grotznik, he had a range of very well-trained Grot orderlies, his, uh, his Gretchen, his small orc assistants, who somehow had picked up just enough medical knowledge to get him back on the operating table, fiddle with him, jolt him full of electricity, and get him back on his feet, whereupon he promptly detonated the heads of those ten orc knobs and taught them a lesson you don't mess with Mad Doc Grotznik. Meanwhile, Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka, the uh, greatest war boss alive in the 41st millennium, uh, with his visions of Gork and Mork and apparently their assistance, because it now seems remarkably difficult to hurt him in any way and make it stick, is leading the greatest war of the 41st millennium, leading hordes of orcs across the stars and generally creating a bloody nuisance of themselves in the eyes of the Imperium, who frankly are in a bit of trouble here. The orc gods, Gork and Mork themselves, exemplify the two orc virtues, one of which is being brutal but cunning, 
and the other is being cunning but brutal. Mork, the cunning but brutal god, is uh, the god of the Brain Boys, the Mech Boys, the Pain Boys, the more sciencey god. And uh, the big machine that orcs build towards him, the Morkanaut, is often fisted with a custom force field, which projects an area of protection around nearby orcs. Meanwhile, Gork, who exemplifies brutal but cunning, is pretty much more about punching, or at least sucker punching, the nearest enemy in the face, followed by punching all of their mates in a follow-up. Gazgal Thraka believes that if he can create a big enough war throughout the galaxy, that he will create a uh, rift in, uh, in the universe through which Gork and Mork can come through into the material plane. Now, the guy is literally off his head, so we don't know whether or not there's any truth in that. But if there is, things could get considerably worse for the rest of the universe very quickly. One orc life form I haven't talked about so much so far is the squig. Now, the squig is sort of the orc equivalent of a dog, but much like other orky life forms, can get very much bigger depending on how tough they are. And the very biggest, often trained by the snakebite clan, who are the uh, most uh, backward and least technological of all the orc clans, is the gargantuan squigoth. If you imagine a much larger war elephant, maybe like a war mammoth, big enough to put an enormous howder on the back of for a good ten orcs and their Gretchen gunners to sit on, firing off mortars across the battlefield, charging and stampeding through their various enemies. That's how big you can get a squig. But you can get them as small as uh, dogs. War bosses sometimes have attack squigs alongside them to bite and rend at their enemies. And the tank buses in particular love training up bomb squigs. The bomb squig is a personal favorite of mine. I've kitbashed a bunch together from uh, some Age of Sigmar squigs, and they are excitable, lunatic, little crazy squigs that like nothing better than to run up towards the enemy joyfully looking to play and to fight, almost oblivious to the fact they have a large amount of high explosives strapped to their back. So when they get in, they just go boom, and that is the end of whatever they were hoping to play with, along, sadly, with the squig. The last aspect of orc culture I'm going to talk on today are the different clans of the orcs. And uh, I've already mentioned the snake bites, who are primitive, not so into the technology. They'd have far fewer mechs, if any. And they're into training up great big uh, war, uh, war squigs and into uh, getting stuck in with fairly primitive tools. Not that any orc doesn't enjoy picking up a chopper and sticking it through the head of the nearest tin can Humi or a space marine. But that's, the, that's where the snake bites interests really lie. One of the bigger and more successful clans are the Goths. They are just so into the fighting. Um, they have a large amount of storm boys, um, led by boss Zagstruck, who are the, uh, the orcs that strap jetpacks to their backs and hope that they don't explode when they go hurtling towards the enemies as fast as they can. Um, and uh, Gazkral Thralka is also one of the Goths. Then there's the Bad Moons, particularly into their technology um, and their weaponry, and they're known as some of the best shots amongst the orcs, who are, by the way, all pretty terrible shots, but if you fire enough weapons or dagger, you sooner or later, you're gonna be hitting something. Then there's the Blood Axes. Uh, the Blood Axes came the closest to taking over orc society, and they are the ones that most exemplify cunning but brutal. The Blood Axes have the most successful commandos, and they actually believe that there should be a small amount of strategy involved before charging in and knocking the living daylights out of as many enemies as they can get their hands on. Unfortunately for them, they took this to the point where the other Orc clans decided they were being a bit unorky in the amount of thought they put in to what they were doing, and they turned around and gave them a good crumping or kicking reducing their numbers to the point where they weren't looking like they're going to take over anymore. Then there's the Evil Sons, 
are well known uh, for being speed freaks, they love their vehicles, and they're particularly well known for painting their vehicles red. I've mentioned the power of uh, Orc belief earlier in this video, and Orcs believe that red ones go faster. Therefore, red ones do actually go faster because there are enough orcs around that believe that they do. And the evil sons love nothing more than getting into bikes, wagons, buggies, trucks, or even jets and hurtling towards the enemy as fast as they possibly can, screaming their lungs out. Finally, there's the Death Skulls, who are, not to put too fine a point on it, a bunch of bloody thieves. The orcs do actually have a basic form of currency in the form of teeth or uh, teeth, orc tusks. They don't like human teeth, they're small, they're unimpressive, they're not worth anything. But a good orc tusk can buy you a piece of weaponry or armor or trade for whatever you happen to need. Now, this does mean that any orc with healthy gums is eventually gonna grow himself some teeth he can use to trade for something, and any orc with a good right hook can just punch out a nearby orc, knock a couple of teeth loose, and take them in order to buy whatever he needs. The Death Skulls, however, mostly prefer just to nick and pilfer, and are somewhat disliked among the other clans, although their ability to get their hands on things that nobody else can seemingly do so is also valued when they're allies in a time of war, which is as often as possible. Why oh, you bleeding no brain umies? That is what you need to know about the orcs. It is October. Get in there, son. Wah! Thank you for joining us on this informative video about orcs in the Warhammer 40k universe. We hope you've enjoyed this video and ask you to subscribe to the Knights of the Game Table YouTube channel.